Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Nicola Sturgeon, Scotland's first minister and leader of the Scottish Nationalists, made it absolutely clear at the beginning of the campaign what she thought it was all about. Independence, she said, was at the heart of the election, and she's with me now here in the studio. Mm -hmm. Nicola Sturgeon, in an independent mm -hmm. Scotland, will children be better able to read and write than they are now? Well, regardless of whether or not in the future Scotland becomes independent, uh, in Scotland right now we're focusing very much on improving standards in education. Uh, if we look at our education system, we've expanded early years education. We have a new school curriculum in place, which has been praised by the OECD. We have record numbers of young people uh, leaving school with higher passes, advanced higher passes, and going on into educa further education or training or employment. We have mm. identified a particular issue with literacy and numeracy, and we also are determined to accelerate the progress mm. in closing the attainment gap. Because so we have a massive programme of reform frankly, underway right now to do that. On literacy, your record is absolutely terrible. Um, your own um, government figures show that you have, uh, among 13 and 14 year olds, only h less than half are now performing well in reading and writing, and that's gone down from 70% mm -hmm. in just a few years well, been, under the SNP. Well, let me, f firstly, let me say I've been very open that that's not good enough, but just to put that into context, we have a survey that uh, measures pupils in the second year of secondary school mm -hmm. but measures them against the standards that they are expected to achieve in the third year of secondary school and we have other information that show that by the time young people are in the third year more than 80 percent are reaching the required level but we have as i said we've got a new curriculum in place curriculum for excellence it's been praised by the oecd but they've made certain recommendations to to us about how we improve the teaching of literacy and numeracy. So right do, now we've got a new national know, improvement sorry. framework, we have an attainment challenge, we have an attainment fund putting significant extra resources okay. into education. Frameworks and challenges and fund. Do you know what is going wrong in Scottish schools? Uh, we have had some advice that the new curriculum is not focusing... The, the new curriculum for excellence, which I'm sure you're familiar with, mm -hmm. is about uh, educating young people to be good citizens, to uh, not just absorb but facts and to figures. To read no, and write as well. I, I'm, I'm coming on to accept that point, to uh, encourage mm -hmm. young people not just to absorb facts and figures but to be able to analyse that and make sense of the world they live in. It's the right thing to do but we have had some advice that we need to have more of a focus within that curriculum on literacy and numeracy and that's exactly what we're doing right now so we've introduced new benchmarks for the teaching of literacy and numeracy and you know I'm, I'm interested in watching... Benchmarks and all the rest of it well, but under the SNP things have got worse and quite well, dramatically I, I, so. I, would, I would challenge that in terms of the, the general performance of education. I mean I look at the on situation right now... Literacy, there's no question. That I, I'm, I'm, not, I, I'm not. I'm mm -hmm. not denying that in terms of literacy and numeracy, and I'm telling you what we are doing to address that. And you say, well, frameworks and benchmarks. I, I look at the debate in England just now about uh, falling budgets in schools. We've just taken a decision to increase the budgets that schools have by 120 million pounds, money going direct to head teachers, which is giving them the ability to invest in measures that they think will improve literacy because and numeracy. Because I mean, you're 700 teachers mm. short at the moment in Scotland, well, so actually, you need to spend uh, some money. Um, teach, teaching recruitment is a, a challenge, not just in Scotland, but in many mm. countries. That's why right now uh, we are increasing teacher intake. The General Teaching Council in Scotland is looking at different ways to bring different kinds of people into teaching. We're trying okay. to encourage retired teachers to come back into teaching. So I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm being very frank about you it. You could I, pay them some more, that might help. Uh, well, we have negotiations with uh, teaching unions, as the is the case in England, about you know the pay and conditions uh, of teachers. That's certainly uh, one of the issues that we've always got to, to keep in mind. But we also need to be both frank about the challenges we've got in education. Some of the challenges are not unique to Scotland. But we also have to recognise that the fundamentals of Scottish education in many respects are very strong. And I, I repeat again, we now have record numbers of young people coming out of our schools with higher and advanced higher passes and okay. going into what we call positive destinations. So uh, I'm focused on improving these areas that we need to improve but also making sure uh, that we don't do a disservice to teachers and pupils across the country by saying everything about Scottish education is bad, because emphatically it is it not. Is. All right, well, let's 
let's return to what you said in the independence blueprint in 2013 about the PISA or OECD rankings. You said Scottish pupils outperform the OECD average in reading and science. The latest results show that we have halted a period of relative international decline since 2000. Can you tell us what's happened since then? No, we, we have seen that situation not as good as we want it to be. Look, Andrew, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and deny that we have the PISA study. We also have what's called SSLN, which was a study, uh, the latest version of which was published last week. I should say it's a sample survey and it looks at actually quite small numbers of pupils. One of the things we have done is introducing it's the national improvement framework you didn't challenge the pisa rankings when they were going well for you you can hardly challenge but them now they're going so badly did, i didn't challenge them right. i, I so said accept, i accepted you, you them, accept them. Okay. i absolutely i know and i've said this many times mm. before i know how important a good education has been to me in my life i want every young person in scotland to have the best education the vast majority of young people in scotland do get the best of education but there are areas where we need to do better and, and i am not shying away from and yet that. under the snp something serious has gone wrong. scotland used well, to be one of the most best educated and, countries and in, many, in the world or, on many measures it's and still you have all is. the powers you have all the powers mm -hmm. to change this mm -hmm. and yet things are going backwards well on literacy and numeracy, we have a particular challenge, mm. but on many other measures of Scottish education, that is just not true. We are not going back. Literacy and numeracy are kind no, of look, important. Look, you're, I, mean, I think you're, you're, you're trying to conduct this information at uh, this interview on the basis that I'm being defensive here. I'm not being defensive. I absolutely right. readily accept uh, the areas where okay. we need to do better. That's why we have put such effort into the initiatives and the reforms that we are taking forward. And the point I was going to make uh, earlier on, which I didn't get the chance to finish, is that we are actually... Uh, introducing more transparency so that I can be held more to account. So instead of sample surveys like the ones we've got, we will have information on every pupil in Scotland at the at required levels, broken down, not just by local authority, you, but school by school, so that there'll be no hiding place for right. any politician and, on the performance and, and, and of you, Scottish education. And you education. said not so long ago that you wanted to be Absolutely. judged by this and your neck would be on the line. Absolutely. And and I, you're looking a little Mary, Queen of Scots at the moment on that I, I, I don't. Uh, I don't wish to be Mary, Queen of Scots. Look, I've been First Minister for two and a half years, and I said when I became First Minister mm. that this was what I wanted to be the defining priority of however many years I am First Minister. And I uh, hold to okay. that. So by the uh, time that we're at the next Scottish election, I want to see improvement. And, you know, we're talking about literacy and numeracy. The other uh, big challenge we've got in Scotland, which again is not unique to Scotland, is to close the attainment gap between uh, the richest Absolutely. and the poorest young people. And, and we're you're very still behind focused England on, on that? Well, on, on some measures, and the, we, we don't mm. measure it in exactly the same way. You and I have okay. had the discussion about university entrance before, Indeed. where the measurements are different in Scotland and England. But in a sense, I'm, I'm not sitting here wanting right. to make those comparisons. I want Scotland to be the best on its own terms. Let's move on to another aspect of, of domestic policy. Is mm. it a scandal if nurses have to use food banks because yes. of their low pay? And that is happening in Scotland. Look. According to the Scottish mm. Royal College of mm -hmm. Nursing spokespeople, that is happening mm -hmm. in Scotland. And again, you have the power as the Scottish Parliament mm -hmm. to set <coughs> public sector pay. Absolutely. You could raise taxes and you could pay Scottish nurses properly. Why Look, don't you? Well, we, we have uh, work to tackle OP. Let me set out what happens here with nurses' pay, and it's the same uh, in the rest of the UK as it is in Scotland. We have the independent pay review body, and it makes recommendations. The Scottish Government, unlike the Westminster Government, has always accepted those recommendations. Uh, we have had a period of pay uh, restraint in the public sector because of our determination to protect they've, jobs. They've lost 14% in terms yeah, of real value you, be, be, of the past period be, of time, and you could correct this. We will continue to work through the pay review body to make sure that nurses get uh, the pay they deserve. I do accept that. But you we've opposed had a... higher pay for nurses this week. Well, look, no, and we didn't. The, I'm trying... the Royal College of Nursing is now talking look, about strike action. Let me let me just set this out because we work through the pay review body. We have agreed with the unions that we're going to jointly okay. commission some research. But there's another important point here, because of the action we've taken in Scotland. Uh, on low pay and because of the commitment we gave mm. that nurses would always get their entitlement to progression. A newly qualified uh, nurse in Scotland uh, is paid £300 more than a newly qualified nurse in England. Uh, somebody okay. at the bottom level of Agenda for Change, it's much more than that. We've also protected the nurse bursary uh, and we're not asking nurse uh, students to pay tuition fees. So it's tough for nurses out there, but we have done far more than any other government in the UK to try to protect the pay of nurses. OK, you have said that independence <coughs> is at the heart of this choice and you've talked a lot about material changes mm. um, and that you, you watch the, 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 the way public opinion <coughs> is going in Scotland. If the Conservatives 
move ahead and you fall back in this election. Is that not a material well, change? Let, let's wait and see who wins the election in I Scotland. An if at the start and, well, of that can, I, can I just set out my position here? Because it is important. Uh, for me, this is a question of at the end of the Brexit process, does Scotland get a choice about our future? You know, the position of the Tories and Labour UK wide is that no matter how badly the Brexit negotiations go, people should just have to like it or lump it. I don't think that's right. So at the end of the Brexit process, I believe people in Scotland should have a choice about our own future. But there's a more immediate priority in this election. After we've left or before we've left? Sorry. At the end of the process, so that when the terms of Brexit are clear and people can compare that with the, the terms and the implications of independence. But the point I was going to make is in this election, there's actually a more immediate priority and opportunity for Scotland and that is about making sure our voice is heard in the Brexit negotiations. This is an important sure. point because there is a lot of concern even among some people who voted leave that we are headed down the road of a very extreme Brexit. Now the Scottish Government previously published proposals that would have accepted we were leaving the EU but mm. would have protected our place in the single market. The Prime Minister dismissed those proposals out of hand. This election well, she actually... It was impractical and well, impossible she, she to actually didn't run. look at them seriously. So this election mm. actually uh, gives the Scottish people the chance to give real democratic legitimacy to those proposals. So my message in this election on Brexit is whether you voted leave or remain, whether you were yes or no in 2014, if you vote right. SNP, you're strengthening my hand to make sure that Scotland's voice is heard mm. in these negotiations and that we don't sacrifice jobs in our economy. We can press the case for Scotland's place in the single market. A lot of SNP votes voters voted to leave Absolutely. the EU. You have always said in the past <coughs> that Scotland must be a full member of the EU after independence. And it's being suggested mm. by some people that you may move to say, actually, EFTA would be all right. Is that the case? Well, we, we published compromise. Would EFTA we, be all right? Well, if Scotland is independent, our position, our position always has been as long as I've been in the SNP and continues to be that we want Scotland to be a full member of the European Union. What we did uh, towards Including the end the of... the Euro? Uh, we, we don't want to go into the Euro and no mm. member of the EU can be forced into the Euro uh, and you know Sweden is one of the examples of that. But what we did at the end of last year was recognise that you know, people, some people voted remain, a majority in Scotland voted remain, some voted leave, Scotland voted differently to yeah, sure. England. So we tried to see if there was compromise ground mm. and we put forward proposals that would have accepted we were leaving the EU as part of the UK, but tried to protect our okay. single market but membership. Can now, I just ask you very briefly, a sort of yes of or no, I'm afraid, mm -hmm. would mem Scottish membership, an independent Scottish membership of EFTA be an acceptable compromise in these circumstances, yes or no? My position is I want Scotland to be in the EU. Now, we have to set out, if we're in an independence mm -hmm. referendum and we're not in that right now, uh, the process for re gaining or retaining, depending on where we are in the Brexit process, uh, EU membership. Now, it may be that we have a phased approach to that by necessity. Uh, and EFTA first, I, EU later well, kind of thing. It may be by necessity, even if we didn't want mm. that, that was... Now, we, we have to set that out at the time because there are still some uncertainties, many uncertainties around the Brexit process. But right. my in this election, if we want to uh, have a chance of protecting our place in the single market on which 80,000 Scottish jobs depend, then vote SNP to strengthen our hand to try You've to do that. You've got the line that. out at the end there. Nicola Sturgeon, thanks for joining <laughs> Thank us in you. the studio in London. I'm absolutely delighted to be joined by Scotland's First Minister, Nicola Sturgeon. Uh, Nicola, obviously it is a joy to have you here. But, you. Since, but since <laughs> you haven't got any pretensions yourself to be Prime Minister of the whole of the United Kingdom, <laughs> wh why are you so visible in this campaign, you know, taking part in things like the leaders' events and all that kind of stuff? Well, the SNP for the last two years has been the third biggest party in the House of Commons, so it's absolutely right and proper that our voice is heard in this campaign. But I think it's really important, when you think about the dynamic of this election in England, it looks as if Theresa May is on course to win with a bigger majority because of the meltdown in the Labour Party. In fact, she called this election to strengthen her hand and her own words. And that makes it all the more important that there are strong voices of opposition in the House of Commons after this election so that we don't have an unfettered, out of control Tory government able to do whatever it wants on Brexit, on austerity, on public services. So from a Scottish point of view, the only way to make sure that our strong voices standing up for Scotland, making our voice heard and protecting our interests is to vote SNP and send SNP MPs to the House of Commons. So that is obviously seen by the Tories as a sign that you're absolutely up for 
coalitions with Labour and the well, Lib Dems. In, in the last general election... And they should election, be straightforward about that. Look, in, in the last general election, I was very straightforward about that. The polls suggested, it turned out they were wrong, but they suggested that a hung parliament might be on the cards. And I was very clear then that if the arithmetic uh, lent itself to a progressive coalition, I would want the SNP to be part of that. This election is different in the sense that the polls don't suggest there is going to be a hung parliament. So unless the polls are getting it very, very, very wrong, the arithmetic in the next House of Commons is not going to lend itself to that. What looks more likely is that we will have a strengthened Tory government on the back of a, a bigger majority in England. So my point is that the, the dynamic and the important thing in this election is to make sure there is a strong opposition holding that Tory government to account. There are massive challenges for the whole of the UK in the next few years, not just Brexit, but the possibility of an extreme, perhaps chaotic Brexit. There is the question of what happens with austerity. I've got a very different view on that to Theresa May. So these things have really big implications for our public services. So my message is, if you don't want the Tories just to have a free hand to do what they want, if you're in Scotland, make sure you send strong Scottish voices. Tory MPs from Scotland will be rubber stamps for Theresa May. I don't think there's any doubt about that. But just as we've seen in the last couple of years, Angus Robertson as leader of the SNP group, providing week after week the only really effective opposition to the Tories, then this election gives us the, the chance to ensure Scotland's voice is not silenced, our parliament is not undermined. We have but, those strong voices. Now, you're a left of centre party. Mm. Do you like what you've seen of Labour's manifesto? Well, it's been really interesting. I know we haven't been supposed to have seen Labour's manifesto thus far. We've seen quite but a lot it's, of it. It's been, we've seen all of it, I think. Um, it's been really interesting because if I look at some of the key policies that Labour is putting forward, free tuition for university students, scrapping hospital car parking, ambitious targets around uh, renewable generation and, and climate change, free school meals. Uh, today, even with the Tories, council mm. house building, these are all policies that the SNP government in Scotland has already So to be clear, if there introduced. was an opportunity for a deal with Labour to govern, you'd do it. To be, look, Jeremy Corbyn's not going to win this election. He's not going to be Prime Minister. I don't think he's going to get within a million miles uh, of, of number 10. And I'm, I'm not saying that in any sort of, uh, you know, opinion sense. I'm saying that as a statement of fact, unless the polls are more wildly wrong than they've ever been before. So I'm, I'm trying to deal with reality. But the point about Labour's policies is... You know, it's very clear from Labour's manifesto uh, that the SNP has been leading the way in terms of progressive policies in the UK. And, you know, let's make sure we can continue that. We don't have a Tory government that's able to drag Scotland backwards. Let's keep being champions of progressive policies with MPs in the House of Commons that can do that. The biggest risk, in my view, from this election is a Tory government that literally has a blank cheque and a free hand. And if you look at what's going to be the opposition, Labour... You know, Labour's in a sorry state, but does anybody think that after this election they're not going to descend into an even sorrier so, 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 state so, so, as they so, fight with each other? So, 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 the only opposition will be the SNP. So, so a couple of points on this. You do now have the power to set income tax bans, income tax rates. They've proposed a new rate of tax for those earning £80,000 or more, tax on mm -hmm. richer people. Would you do that in Scotland? Well, we, we've just set income tax rates in Scotland for this yeah. year, so we've uh, made no change to the basic rate of income tax. What about tax. in the future, well, can though? I, can I just, do you think, is, it a, is it a good well, idea? Can I, can I just set Please. out a position first properly? Um, we, we've not changed the basic rate because we think at a time of rising living standards mm. that would be wrong. We've not raised the, the higher rate as well, but we decided not to give a cut to higher rate tax I know, you didn't raise the, the threshold. Done, so we yeah. didn't raise the threshold because that really speaks to our priorities of investment in public services and helping the so vulnerable. slightly better off people paid a bit not, more. Well, they don't pay more than they pay just now. They're just not getting a yeah. tax cut, and that speaks I'm to our priorities. More than in anything. terms of yeah. uh, we, at the 2015 election... Uh, said that we would support a 50 pence top yeah. additional rate of tax. We haven't done that in Scotland alone because we don't, although we control the tax rates yeah. in Scotland, we don't control you know, measures to uh, get rid of or, or tackle tax avoidance, so to, to avoid people switching their income into capital gains. So is that off the agenda we, then? We haven't done that in Scotland alone, although we keep it under review. I do think there is an argument for that UK-wide. Mm. Now, I haven't published my manifesto yet. Touch wood, it hasn't been leaked uh, yet. We'll put forward our policies there, but I think there's still a case for that UK-wide at a time when our public services are under so much pressure and we see poverty rates rising because but of the Tory welfare agenda. Forgive me, you haven't answered the question now on 
are, are putting up the tax for those that, that's of, of 80,000 or that, more. That's not my policy. And so the, you're against it? Well, uh, it's not a policy I've put forward in Scotland, and we control, as you said, tax rates in Scotland. So as somebody who's famously by, supposed by to be straight talking, you haven't By definition, really if it's not my question. policy, I don't okay. support it. Um, okay. but, we, right. but we will set tax rates every year in Scotland, and we'll consider uh, the balance of that. You know, tax rates are obviously important in terms of raising... Mm revenue but we've also got to look at uh, the the economy and what we need to do to, to grow our economy as well so we'll take uh, balanced decisions on tax but we'll take them in our own budgetary cycle uh, because we now control income now, tax now, rates. Now one of the critiques of you in government made for example by the respected OECD hmm. is that standards in schools have declined what's gone wrong? Well let me address that point directly, so mm. I'm not trying to dodge it, but let me just put a bit of context around yeah. it. We've introduced a new school curriculum which has been praised by the OECD. We have record but you numbers... you accept that standards have I'll, gone down? I'll come on to this okay. specific point, but we have record numbers of young people leaving school with higher passes, advanced higher passes, going into university, uh, training or employment. So on many measures, Scottish education is doing well and improving. We have a particular challenge as we've introduced this new curriculum around the teaching of literacy and numeracy, and we're putting a lot of effort, we've got a programme of reform in education designed to tackle that, but also accelerate progress in terms of closing the attainment gap, the, the gap between the richest and the poorest uh, young people, and we're backing all of that with greater transparency. Do you think you took your eye I mean, off the ball initially? No, I, I, I don't. We've, over the past few years, we've been introducing this new curriculum, but I, I've been very upfront about my determination to tackle the areas where to be very frank about it, I don't think we're doing as well as we should be doing. So we have a, a new attainment challenge. We're putting more resources directly to school. So I, I know the debate in England is about falling school budgets. We are increasing the resources going to schools and giving head teachers much greater autonomy about how that money is spent. I've got lots more to <laughs> ask you. You'll be sad to hear. But first, <laughs> Anushka's got one or two things to say. Thank you. Well, there has been no love lost these days between our guest and the Prime Minister, Theresa May, and yet it started off so well. This was their first official meeting, and Nicola Sturgeon tweeted that this picture might make girls everywhere feel like nothing is off limits. They were probably quite inspired by this picture, picture too. Another historic meeting between the two most powerful women in Britain, although the Daily Mail decided to use it to wind up us feminists by saying it was a battle of Lexit. Well, here we are not interested in pins, we are interested in politics, so let's compare that. Number one, mandate. Nicola Sturgeon has led her party into national polls in Scotland and she won one million votes in 2016. Theresa May, as Tory leader, hasn't gone to the whole country quite yet, so for now it is a mandate in Maidenhead. 35,000. She'll be hoping to do better than that on June the 8th, but for now, Nicola can boast my mandate is better than yours. Not so when it comes to the UK-wide personal approval rating. Theresa May in the positive, a plus 10, perhaps an election bounce. Across the UK, Nicola, I'm afraid it is minus 36, although I imagine this is the number that she will be interested in, plus 11, when you just look at Scotland. Now, this week, the Prime Minister talked about jobs for the girls and jobs for the boys. And we learned that in the May household, she does the cooking and he takes out the bins, although he did also point out that she also runs the country. And so I must ask Nicola, in your household, what are the jobs for the girls? Oh, I'm afraid in my household, my husband uh, does all the cooking and most of the domestic tax. I got on with the girl job of running the country. Oh, nice answer. <laughs> Do you recognise that <laughs> distinction between... No, I, I, you know, I, I don't want to get into a sort of ding-dong with the Prime Minister here, but I think it's really important. We're, we're all trying to break down gender, gender stereotypes. And, you know, I've spent a lot of time, and I know Theresa May will agree with this, and saying to girls, there's nothing off limits. You should aspire to whatever you want to do. I think you do. agree on all that, don't you? That, that I, I hope so, but limit. I think we've got to be careful we don't then just play into these gender stereotypes. But I hope we would agree that we should encourage all young girls to think they can run the country, they can be brain surgeons, they can do absolutely anything they want. And uh, that, I think, is really important. Now, now where you don't agree... Um, oh, many things. Well, there are a few fair, things, but you, say. I'm delighted to say, are joining us here at ITV on Thursday for our leaders' debate. Yes. Um, the Prime Minister is not joining us, or at least she's so far said she's not joining us. Why do you think 
she doesn't want to participate in this head-to-head -head with you and the other party leaders? Well, it kind of, if I can use a, a Scottish word, it kind of looks as if she's feared, uh, which means frightened of, mm. of the scrutiny. You know, I, I think doing TV appearances like the one show is all perfectly legitimate but not as a, a substitute for the hard questions and the hard scrutiny. So I'll be delighted to put myself into that debate on Thursday. Theresa May seems to want to go through this election dodging the public, dodging any real questions. You know, there's been reports that the media have to submit their questions in advance. So I'll challenge her today. You know, change your mind, come and join us on Thursday. I'd say the same to Jeremy Corbyn. And let's have a proper debate where we all put forward our policies, but we all are subject to scrutiny and hard questions as well. Yeah. I mean, as it happens, there may be other journalists who are asked to uh, tell them what the... I mean, I've never been asked uh, by any... Sure, I'm, I'm you only or going Theresa on the anybody yeah. ...to talk about my questions in advance. Of course, I never would. Um, the... You certainly didn't agree to do it for me today. I <laughs> <laughs> Not that I would you very asked sensibly you. didn't ask. You very because <laughs> you don't want to know what I say when people ask. Um, now, if I could, however, um, ask you on this whole issue of a second independence mm. referendum, some people think that this vote that we're about to see on June the eighth mm. will be a vote by the Scottish people on whether they want a second independence referendum. How do well, you see it? Well, firstly, the, the vote on June the 8th will not decide whether Scotland becomes independent or not. Yes, there's the issue of who should be in charge of Scotland's future. Should it be the Scottish people and the Scottish Parliament or a Westminster government? My position is, is quite straightforward. At the end of the Brexit process, and oh. I stress that, not now, but at the end of the process, when we know the terms of Brexit, I think Scotland should have a choice about our future. Um, you know, the Tory position appears to be UK-wide. It doesn't matter how bad the Brexit talks go, people just have to like it or lump it. I don't think that's right. I think we should have a choice over our future. But actually, in this election, there's a much more immediate opportunity for Scotland, and that is to make sure our voice is heard in these Brexit negotiations. Because, you know, we, I think, see real risks now, not just of Brexit, but of an extreme or chaotic Brexit. I caught some of what David Davis was saying earlier on and that would be really damaging to the economy it would sacrifice a lot of jobs now the Scottish Government put forward proposals just at the tail end of last year that accepted we'd leave the EU but wanted to protect our place in the single market Theresa May dismissed them out of hand so my message in this election to voters in Scotland you can give some democratic legitimacy to those proposals to try to protect our place in the single market and whether you voted leave or remain or or yes or no in 2014 if you vote for me and for the SNP you strengthen my hand in making sure Scotland's just, voice is Just heard. very briefly because unfortunately we are out of time but mm -hmm. can I therefore just though be clear if you get fewer seats fewer votes than you did last time in this June the mm -hmm. 8th election. Is that a blow to your hopes of a second well, independence? We're, we're fighting every constituency to win, but you know, elections are judged by who wins. So the, the question is who will win the election in Scotland? Now, I take nothing for granted, but I'm oh. campaigning to win the election in Scotland. And traditionally, in any democracy, it's the party that wins that has the endorsement for its position. Lovely to see you again, <laughs> and we'll doubtless talk more before June the 8th. Thanks to the First Minister.